This is the day that the Lord has made. It is good to see you, adults in the world. Beware, we are outnumbered today. Children and youth are overtaking the world, which is a great, glorious, amazing thing. Uh, so uh, this morning, while I, uh, before I lose anybody's attention, right after this service, we have a luncheon, and you're invited. And it's a fundraiser luncheon uh, for uh, youth who are going to pilgrimage. If you are a youth and going to pilgrimage, give me a woohoo. That's, they're going. And there's even more. Uh, there are, I think we're at 22 kids right now. Uh, and uh, there's a couple other that have shown interest. Autumn Gentry, our youth and children's minister, can give you more information about that. And we can get you plugged in if you're visiting with us and you want to know about those things. So please come to the fundraiser luncheon after church today. Uh, if you're in favor of that announcement, give me just one more woohoo. All right, good. Um, if I do it from up here, it makes all kinds of feedback and stuff, so we don't want to do that. There's a lot of uh, announcements uh, uh, that I want to point your attention to. Hurricane Helene relief right now, we are still primarily uh, supporting through UMCOR, but we, are, we continue to uh, uh, build a relationship with a church in Asheville, and so more information will come uh, about uh, regarding that. You can, uh, if you want to make an above and beyond donation to uh, Hurricane Helene Relief, you can write Long Memorial and either UMCOR or Hurricane in the memo line, and we'll make sure that those funds go through UMCOR. 100% of that goes to direct uh, disaster relief. Uh, we are also remembering those who are less fortunate uh, and in need of all kinds of uh, varying ways through the Christian Help Center. And uh, we are sponsoring and creating, providing Thanksgiving meals, which you can buy well in advance. There's information about that. The idea is that you go shopping, you get the items on that list, get the whole meal, all of it together, put it in a bag and bring it up here. Uh, and then uh, the Christian Help Center will provide turkeys for those families closer to Thanksgiving date. We need those by November 3rd. That's a lot earlier than Thanksgiving. So you'll do all that shopping, you'll forget that you did that shopping, and then you can do your regular Thanksgiving shopping a little bit later. Uh, please note that uh, our church finances, we have some catching up to do before the end of the year, and there's all kinds of information in the bulletin about how to uh, uh, contribute to that. This is a, a uh, memorable week. Uh, this week every year, the Tillett family uh, remembers the servicemen who lost their lives uh, in Afghanistan. Um, the, uh, their daughter was a helicopter pilot, was actually out that morning, came back, all good. Then the next shift went out on a mission and the guys that she flew with, uh, they are the ones that died and lost their lives. So they were very close. Uh, and so uh, that impacted uh, you as a family and us as a church. Uh, and so uh, may God just bless the, the families as they mourn. This is kind of an anniversary time uh, of year, a difficult time of year. And uh, for all those who are in harm's way, but Ben and Harriet, um, Lord in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yes. Um, we have uh, another event coming up next Sunday night in New York. If you're newer to our congregation, this is a fun event. It is also a fundraiser supporting the music program and the youth of our church. It's Broadway show tunes uh, that we put on members of the congregation as well as guests from outside the congregation. We need an RSVP on that, uh, and uh, the RSVPs are due today. This is the last day. It's on the orange sheet. You can fill that out. Tell us how many are coming. Just drop it in the offering plate if you'd like to make it really easy. Uh, that is for next Sunday at 7 o'clock. It's always a great time and uh, uh, for a good cause as well. So you have that information. One thing regarding, two things regarding ministries. Uh, one, our prayer shawl ministry is in need of some rebooting. We have uh, a number of prayer shawls. Every stitch of these 
Blankets has been made with prayer, and we give those to those who are hospitalized or shut in or facing various struggles. Um, there's a, an organizational, kind of a reorganizational meeting tomorrow morning at 930 in the church library. And also a reminder that there are many people in our congregation who would be here if they could be here. There is a, a, a repository for note cards. You don't even have to put a stamp on it. You could take one of the people on our prayer lists and just write a note of encouragement before you leave today. Drop that in the clear plastic box that's out in the narthex and we'll take care of delivering that to the person who could really use uh, some encouragement. So uh, a, an opportunity sponsored by our nurture committee. So those are the announcements that I have. I don't see anybody that is uh, beating down the door or making sure. So let us continue with our, uh, oh, one other announcement that was handed to me late today. Uh, on behalf, Meg Denton shared this with me. Walnut Grove is uh, another United Methodist Church. Walnut Grove has barbecue uh, by the pound left over. And if you're interested in that, uh, they had their fall festival yesterday. Meg Denton, stand up and wave. Uh, you can see Meg after this service. So um, now we continue our worship with our prayer. Good morning. Would you please join me in our call to worship, which you can find printed in your bulletin. Let your minds ponder the manifold works of God. Let your spirit soar amid the wonders of creation. There is a whole place in life all around us. The earth is full of God's creation. 
Sun and rain proclaim God's infinite imagination. Moon and stars sing the glory of the Eternal One. It is God who shares with us wisdom and understanding. We depend on God for the gift of life. We gather to worship and praise the God of all people. We come to learn from the God we only dimly perceive. We reach out for answers to our questions. We long to find meaning and purpose for our days. Let us pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve, and to give life itself for us, we approach your word with all. We live in different times, but in the same world in which Jesus ate and drank, lived and died. We share the same baptism and have the same opportunity to know your love and serve you. Help us dare to believe and trust and live our days returning your love through the neighbors near and far who need to know your care. Amen. I invite you to stand and body your spirit as we join together singing our opening hymn, number 581 in your hymnal. of faith, which you can find on page 881 in your hymnal. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for illumination, which you can find printed in your bulletin. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as your scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our scripture this morning is read from the Gospel of Mark, the 10th chapter, beginning with verse 35. It's on page 44 of your pew Bibles, if you'd like to follow along. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you, he asked. They replied, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in glory, in your glory. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said. Can you drink the cup I drink or be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup I drink and be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared. When the ten heard about this, they became indignant with James and John. Jesus called them together and said, You know that those who are regarded as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the word of God for the people of God.
with this uh, hymn that we uh, sing that's printed in your bullet. Good job, kids. Yep, slide that way. Oh, man. Oh, thank you, thank you. Well, I don't know how to top that with a message now because I think that was the message right there, wasn't it? Y'all did great. Let's give them another round of applause. Does anybody know what y'all did that was so special? No? You don't? What? What did you do? What do you think? Sharing your love through what? A song, right? All of you shared your special gift of singing with everybody out here. You want to do it again? No. <laughs> Chuck, you didn't hear that. All right, guys, we're going to bow our heads and we're going to pray together, okay? One, two, three. Dear God, thank you for sharing your love through these children and allowing us to hear it. In your name we pray, amen. All right, guys, we're going to line up and go that way. sermon, uh, that's not how this works, uh, was fun watching that play out as the uh, Chuck and others were like, no, sit here, be quiet. And the kids were like, no, that's not how this works. You're going to put me up on this pew, you're going to hear me. Uh, anyway, uh, some of you, we have a bunch of youth here with us, uh, and there's a bit of a theme uh, early on in the sermon. You have to study hard so that you can get good grades. You have to get good grades so that you can get into a good school. And it's good to go to college uh, and have to study, although there's other paths too, so that you can graduate and get a good job. You make lots of money uh, so you can have nice things. Uh, you have nice things so that you can, right, invite your church friends to come and enjoy them with you. <laughs> That's how it works in the world. Or let's take politics. You haven't heard anything about politics recently, have you? Uh, I'm not going to say anything about a president, but let's just pick uh, or uh, arbitrary senator, and we'll give them the benefit of the doubt, a senator who is actually trying to do the greatest good for the greatest number of people. Uh, the senator might have a certain belief about a policy, uh, and, but, and that senator really wants to do good things, but a certain bill comes up and the, the senator doesn't like it. But they hear that if they support this bill that they don't like, if they compromise and they support that through, then they'll get support from the, the other side. Kind of a, you scratch my back and I'll scratch yours. It's, it's maybe supposed to work like that with some of the compromise out there. Or, uh, let's get out of politics. Let's just take the side of a building. Okay, the side of a building. Some of our folks like to go watch NC State football games at Carter Finley Stadium, which is right next to PNC Arena. I, I see some wolves out there. But wait, it's not PNC Arena anymore. It's now Lenovo, right? So uh, the naming rights were awarded to Lenovo because they paid bucket loads of money. How much does a name cost? I had to go look this up. WR, uh, no, it was the News and Observer on September 12th ran an article. It's a $60 million 10-year contract. That's a lot. I wonder if whoever got that contract needs a good church home, maybe, uh, and needs to learn how to tithe. For $6 million a year, you too can put your name 
on a sports venue. That's just how it worked. I, I wonder if ever in the history or the future of naming stuff that someone would consider paying $6 million a year and include a tribute to their fifth grade elementary teacher. If I had $60 million to spend over 10 years just laying around, I wonder if I'd consider bidding to make it the Mr. Robert Reggio Center. Because he made a big difference in fifth grade for me. But it, it doesn't tend to really happen. It doesn't work that way, really, does it? Or, or maybe uh, I wonder if anyone in the history of naming stuff has been inspired by the person in front of them at an exit down in Durham or Raleigh or someplace who rolled down their window and gave uh, a little bit of change and a coat to someone on a cold day who was holding a cardboard sign. Now, it, it doesn't work that way, even though the Mr. Reggio Center, the more I think about it, has a nice ring to it. No, in our world, power and authority, status and reputation, even dignity that a, a mother could be proud of, that's what humans strive for. And certainly it was what people were striving for even 2,000 years ago in the Bible lesson that Terry Cates read for us in this morning's scripture. The Gospel of Mark, the author, is keen to paint the stark contrast between what Jesus is teaching and what the disciples are really struggling with time after time after time. When we encounter this scripture, Jesus has begun the journey really toward his crucifixion in Jerusalem, his death, his sacrifice. In the paragraph right before the one that Terry read this morning, Jesus again shares with the disciples that things are about to get rough, that he will be turned over to the authorities, beaten, uh, well, first arrested, beaten, and then killed before he rises again. He, in chapter 10, verse 32, we read, they were on their way up to Jerusalem with Jesus Leading the way, the disciples were astonished and those who followed them were afraid. And again, he took the twelve aside and told them what was going to happen. We're going up to Jerusalem, he said, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will hand him over to the Gentiles who will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. And three days later... He will rise. Now, this is the third time in Mark's gospel that he records Jesus telling the disciples what's coming. But the very next verses, the very next, for the third time they've heard this, James and John, two of the disciples, they've got their eyes on the prize. Yeah, 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 suffering, blah, blah, blah. Do something for us, Jesus, whatever we ask. We want to sit at your right hand and your left hand, the prize seats in glory. If we go through this, maybe a little bit of suffering. Maybe it'll be like it was prophesied long ago. They don't say this, but I'm wondering. Because there's, there's prophecies like in the book of Daniel. Daniel says uh, in Daniel 7, 27, the sovereignty, power, and greatness of all the kingdoms of, under heaven will be handed over to the holy people of the Most High. The kingdom will be everlasting and everyone, even rulers, will worship and obey him. Jesus, just, just give us a shot. Give us a, 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 let us sit at your right hand. This would be great. I know trouble don't last always, just a little while. But let us be great and glorified. That's what they're so James and John asked to be put in the seats of power and glory. Jesus says, though, you don't know what you're asking. You're out of your mind and out of your depth, Jesus says. Kind of puts them back in their place. Can you drink the cup I drink? Can you be baptized with the baptism I'm baptized with? Now, just a little word of an aside here. Jesus isn't talking about Gatorade. And he's not talking about what we do when we baptize a little baby in the font. The cup, drinking the cup, is a, is a metaphor in the Bible about suffering. Can you, can you go through what I'm about to go through fully? We remember maybe in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus is about to be arrested and killed, he pleads with God the Father, please take this cup from me. 
He's not holding Gatorade or coffee or anything. He's saying, take my suffering away, please. But not my will, but yours be done, O oh God. So when he says, you're not going to be able to drink this cup, you're not going to be able, the same kind of with baptism. He's not talking about being baptized into the church. Baptism is sort of, in its general form, is, is like participating in uh, being, being washed over. So it's more like you won't, you're not able to sort of drown in the flood of suffering that's coming. That's what Jesus is telling them. And they say, though, yeah, I think we can do it. I think we can do it. I'm willing to do it, James and John say, if it gets me to that glory. Jesus says, you know what? Your wish is going to come true. You are going to drink my cup and be baptized in my baptism, which is alluding to, this is sort of foreshadowing, but eventually church history records that both James and John were indeed persecuted and martyred for their faith. So Jesus says, Unfortunately, yes, that is what's coming. But it is not coming so that you can sit at my right hand and my left hand. That's not the way it works. God has a plan. God decides how God's glory shines forth. You cannot go through something in a way that it's sort of punching your ticket. Hey, yeah, remember Jesus? Remember that bad day I had? Therefore, set me up in glory. That's sort of the attitude, I think, that James and John have. That's not how this works, Jesus says. And, and now the story we read takes a turn. If you're following along on that page in the New Testament, Mark chapter 10, then the other disciples, within earshot, they watched it happen, they heard it happen, and they become indignant that James and John would have asked for their power rankings. The Greek word there for indignant, I don't do this a lot, I'm not one of those pastors, I didn't even study Greek, I had to look it up. But the Greek word there is agonokteo, agonokteo. Okay? And what that means is uh, a feeling or showing anger or annoyance at what is perceived as unfair treatment. And the disciples weren't the only ones to be indignant. Just a few chapters ago, we heard recently in Mark 10, well, no, verses ago, 10, 14. But when Jesus saw that the children were trying to come to Jesus and the disciples were shooing them away, Jesus was a ganakteo. Jesus was indignant. He was, he was saying, no, let the little children come to me, for such is the kingdom of God. So the disciples have the same kind of indignation. He, they show their, their indignation that their buddies would dare ask for seats, one and two, next to Jesus. Now, it, it begs the question, I think, why were the other disciples indignant? I wonder if they thought maybe there should be 10 seats right around, there are 12 seats right around Jesus. We all should get a, a share of the power and the glory. Maybe that's why. They didn't want these two disciples kind of breaking off, forming an alliance and, and trying to win the game, so to speak. Let's not let them have power without us. I don't know. We don't really know what their motives were. But Jesus uses the teaching moment here to tell them how it's supposed to work. Look, he says, the Gentiles, when they have power and authority, they love to lord it over everyone else. That's what you, and that's what you are foolishly asking for, Jesus basically says to his disciples. That's how it works in the world, but in God's kingdom, it doesn't work like that. Put it out of your mind and your heart. Purge it from your consciousness. It is not so with you. Here are Jesus' exact words there, translated in the New International Version. Instead, he says in verse 43, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. I want to notice here that Jesus does not talk about the future glory. He says, if you want to be great, be a servant. But if you carefully look at it, he doesn't say, and then you'll be great. 
He just says flat out, hard stop, if you want to be great in God's kingdom, be a servant. If you want to have uh, uh, glory, be a slave to all. The, the, Jesus does not promise the disciples power, at least in this place. Greatness is not promised. Uh, even the Son of Man, he says, came to serve and to give his life so that others may be ransomed for their sins. There is a conspicuous absence of the reward clause in this teaching of Jesus. It's present in other places, but it's absent in this moment. Fix your eyes on the prize. Yes, he says, the kingdom of God is present when you are the servant of others. The kingdom of God is present when you give your life as a slave to all. You, uh, some of you youth, are anybody helping to serve the luncheon today? Anybody? Have, let me see hands, right? I don't want you to think, because of Jesus' message here, I don't want you to think, if I serve and do a good job, then we'll be able to go to pilgrimage because people will support us. Now, that's going to happen. But at a spiritual level, when you serve, period, the kingdom of God is present. And in that sense, really, in one way, all the other folks here should serve you. Right? I mean, they could. There's a mutuality to it as well. Not just serve so you earn it and make a fun rate. That's sort of the world's way of doing things. We believe as Christians, when we serve, the kingdom of God is present. So, yes, you're still going to serve. No, there's not going to be a bunch of volunteers. Although somebody might be inspired, right? Uh, and, and then you can compete over who that person's going to replace, and you'll be like, I want to be the one you replace. And then it sounds a lot like the scripture, and Jesus says, you're missing the whole point. I want to change just a little bit here as I get close to wrapping up. When something goes wrong in the world, who do people blame? Mostly we blame the people in charge. And the people in charge tend to blame other people in charge if they get accused. And, and they might even scapegoat folks on the bottom rung of the ladder. It happens in our world. And when something doesn't happen, we want to look for someone who's responsible. Someone who's not us, usually, and say, if they just did better, this would have happened. That's the way it works amongst the Gentiles. But it's not supposed to be the way it happens in the kingdom. In the kingdom, we're just called to serve and to trust that God is at work. The folks without the decision-making power end up continuing on doing their jobs, just serving others, trusting the kingdom is at work. The folks who believe God is at work, we continue serving. That serving might be with gifts of organization or inspiration. It might be with the gift of strength and perseverance. It might be with the gift of humility and creativity, finding new ways around problems, trusting in faith that God will reveal new ways. Jesus didn't tell the other ten disciples when they were indignant, good job being indignant, other disciples. Way to go. No. Instead, he set them all toward serving. I wonder... I'm just wondering if he hoped that the other ten disciples would actually serve James and John as their brothers, wash their feet, make their favorite casserole on their birthdays. That might be a more challenging challenge than suffering a bit on the way to glory. So I wonder, church, what can you do to make someone else's life a little bit better? Or what can you do to make someone's life a lot better? Lose yourself in that? And witness the kingdom at work. The blessing, the full blessing, might not be waiting till pilgrimage. And today, you're just going through the motions to raise some extra money. There might be someone that you encounter today that's the blessing that all of this is about. We didn't read it, but I want to just mention, give a little foreshadowing. Our intern, Noah Vaughn, will be preaching on this next passage next week. So this is a teaser. Uh, but Mark gives the very next story in the gospel as a sermon illustration. With all this talk about greatness, the very next thing that happens, Jesus is leaving Jericho, going towards Jerusalem. You might recognize those two city names. The road from Jericho to Jerusalem is the one that Jesus set the Good Samaritan story on. There was a man going on the road to Jericho, and he was beaten and left for dead. And then the Good Samaritan story happened. So Jesus is actually walking on this road, leaving Jericho towards Jerusalem. 
He's walking this dangerous road, and on it there is a blind beggar named Bartimaeus. He's a nobody. He's blind. He's completely dependent on others for his livelihood. And this particular nobody is annoying. He is shouting at Jesus, disrupting the important people around him. And the people around Jesus are indignant and tell him to shut up and be quiet because they have important ministry to do. They're on their way to someplace special. And Jesus says, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's not be indignant here. And he calls Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus, to him. He asks him what he wants. Of course, uh, Bartimaeus says he wants to see, and Jesus heals him. In the midst of whatever people thought Jesus was up to, Jesus was serving the person that would have been left behind. Whoever wants to be great among you becomes servant of all. And all means all. Now, we don't know where that will lead sometimes when we start serving that way. It's impossible to tell. We don't know where the path will lead, but we know from the gospel where we will be. We will be in God's kingdom where we were created to be. That's the work we were made for. That's how this works. So remember what I said at the beginning, you have to study hard so you can get good grades, right? And grades to get in school and all that. Well, what if you have to study hard so that you can use your God-given brain to serve others with intelligence? Maybe you have to try your best in school so that you can learn discipline even when studying, even when it's hard to study and learn to meet others' needs as best you can. Whether you're apprenticing in a trade or studying at a college or caring for family members or working a simple job, you have opportunities to show love to your coworkers, your clients, your neighbors. You have a good job, maybe not so you can make a lot of money, but maybe so you can be a good steward of the gifts that God has given you. You can share lots of blessings so that the world is better with you in it. You can have gratitude for the needs that God meets in your life. And you can learn to be joyful, grateful, tuned in to love. When, when you share the ups and downs, the blessings and the challenges, the laughter, the tears, the indignation even in the face of injustice. And you can share the peace that passes all understanding. When you share with your church family, the family of spirit who is also learning to serve one another. And I think for the church, that's how it works. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We come to our time of prayer here this morning. We want to uh, express our deepest sympathy uh, to Cleo winners. We, We are glad that you're here. You're welcome here. Your mom, Cora, passed away. Her funeral was just yesterday. So welcome back to church, and we pray for your whole family, Cleo. Um, Also, there was a a misunderstanding we had. Uh, uh, It was uh, not Michael's stepmother, Donna Gay, that passed away. Ashley, Ashley, uh, her stepmother, passed away, and I apologize for that misunderstanding. But please keep Ashley and her children and Michael and all of them in prayer after the death of uh, her stepmother, Donna. I have great news to report. Nanette Carver is doing fantastically well as she has been moved from ICU to a step-down unit now, and they're hopeful that she'll be able to come home very soon. She has spent some time in the hospital. Um, Also, Joe Weinberger is at home. Eddie Bridges began uh, cancer treatments this last week. Milton Hadley continues to do great. He's been moved to uh, Duke Regional for a short time with rehab. Uh, so our prayers are with he and with him and with Carol. Conrad Kimbrough has wrapped up uh, treatments uh, and looked forward to a good report uh, coming soon. Don Hill continues to go through some cancer treatments. Um, and uh, we thank God for a good, a successful surgery with Chandler Harris. Uh, We pray for Candace Long Gillis and the twins that she is carrying. Uh, There are other names who are listed there. Uh, They are in our prayers. I wonder if there are others uh, that we would lift up here this morning. You don't have to be a member here or anything. Anyone 
there's a prayer on your mind, we're glad to pray with you. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting that you are at work in their lives. God, teach us how to serve. Show us your kingdom present all around us. Bless us so that when we are in need, uh, that others will be there for us. God, when we get it wrong, through pride, uh, through selfishness, through all of any of the other sins, God, we pray that you would help us. Give us the strength and conviction to repent, to pursue righteousness again. Help us to see your kingdom at work in the world in every place and help us to be the people you have created us to be. Hear us now, O God, as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I'd invite the ushers to come forward as we have an opportunity as a congregation to share and we hear a special offertory from our chancel choir.
God, giver of every good and perfect gift, teach us to render to you all that we have and all that we are, that we may praise you not with our lips only, but with our whole lives, turning everything, the the sorrows, the obligations, the joys of all our days into a living service and sacrifice to you. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We continue standing as we sing our closing hymn, number 2175, from the faith we sing, Together We Serve. how it works for me. It kind of comes back midweek. Maybe you can remember the closing uh, verse to that. Together by grace we witness and work, remembering Jesus in whom we grow strong. Together we serve in spirit and truth, remembering that love is the strength of our song. Go in peace.